a commencement speech in June of 1963 at American University in Washington, D.C. He had intended to work on the speech the day before commencement, but domestic problems forced him to meet with a group of mayors all day. Kennedy stayed up all night to finish the speech on a flight back from Hawaii. At 9 a.m., Air Force One landed. Kennedy was driven to the White House, changed his shirt, and went directly to the campus. He arrived at the commencement platform 30 minutes late. Soviet diplomats who were invited to attend expected the customary Cold War lashing from the president. I have chosen this time and place to discuss a topic on which ignorance too often abounds and the truth too rarely perceived. And that is the most important topic on earth, peace. I speak of peace because of the new face of war. Total war makes no sense in an age where great powers can maintain large and relatively invulnerable nuclear forces and refuse to surrender without resort to those forces. It makes no sense in an age where a single nuclear weapon contains almost 10 times the explosive force delivered by all the Allied Air Forces in the Second World War. It makes no sense in an age when the deadly poisons produced by a nuclear exchange would be carried by wind and water and soil and seed to the far corners of the globe and a generations yet unborn. To secure these ends, high-level discussions will shortly begin in Moscow, looking towards early agreement on a comprehensive test ban treaty. To make clear our good faith and solemn convictions on this matter, I now declare that the United States does not propose to conduct nuclear tests in the atmosphere so long as other states do not do so. The United States, as the world knows, will never start a war. We do not want a war. We do not now expect a war. This generation of Americans has already had enough, more than enough, of war and hate and oppression. No government or social system is so evil that its people must be considered as lacking in virtue. As Americans, we find communism profoundly repugnant as a negation of personal freedom and dignity. But we can still hail the Russian people for their many achievements in science and space, in economic and industrial growth, in culture, in acts of courage. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet we all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. The speech, which received scant attention in the US, made headlines across the world. It was the first address broadcast by the Voice of America into communist East Europe, not jammed by Soviet authorities. As Vestia and Pravda, Soviet newspapers carried the full text. Then the president went to Berlin.